Are you Ankita? Can you start recording? recording? Thank you. Yeah. Raju, it's the rates. He just started. Thank you, Raju. <clears throat> so I'll start again. Welcome again, guys, uh, to this demo, which I'll be leading through in the next hour or maybe hour and a half. It could go a little bit longer because I have a lot to show you guys and time is as always limited. Uh, can I request everybody to go on mute unless you have a question? You can unmute and ask, or you can put it in the chat. I'm going to look at the chat as well actively. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. You can ask them anytime. You don't have to wait till the end. <clears throat> all right. So again, welcome you all. Let's get started. So the brief about me is right here. If you already don't have this, you will be getting it from Mithun Technology. Somebody from Mithun Technologies will send you this. So you should have a copy of it. Uh, my overall experience is 18 plus years. I'm currently an architect in one of the leading companies. And I've been doing these sessions for a long time now. Uh, even before Mithun Technologies, I used to do it. And with Mithun itself, it's been at least four years. I don't even remember. Maybe this is 20, 25th batch. So essentially, I've been doing this for a while. And uh, for my experience, I have experience in every field. Uh, which is related to IT, uh, or I should say domain. I started as a developer when I was a fresher. Back in the day, it was C, C++ and stuff. So whoever would join, you will also see a lot of my examples relating to C, C++ as well. That doesn't mean that you have to know C++, but I'm just saying. <clears throat> and then I graduated into design phase where I was working for a company in India, and then I moved to US about 12 years ago. And since then, I've done various other roles, end-to-end -end leads, integration leads, even QA, even automation, uh, automation tools development, script writing, you name it. And I've done almost everything in 18 years of career. So uh, that is in a nutshell. And uh, I've been working in Python for almost, I think, nine, 10 years now. And uh, I also use Python in my daily day-to-day -day activities and things like that i i just say i love python a lot of course it's very easy i don't have to repeat all that stuff you guys probably know all of it <clears throat> since you're here but uh, python can be used in so many ways to even help you in your day-to-day -day activities so alpha that's nutshell my uh, experience and background but i'll first answer Right away, the few questions that I've seen people have, starting with the course duration, it's here, 32 to actually 35, but you can say almost 40, depending on how the entire group of people is. So today is a demo, but when you start uh, as a group, which would be later, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, then it all depends how the group setting is. If there are more freshers, then it could be, uh, you know, 40 or 35 classes. Point being, I don't have to rush out anything because this course is for somebody who doesn't know anything. This course is for somebody who knows something and this course is for somebody who wants to learn the advanced concepts as well. Somebody's mentioned that on the chat. So I think you haven't seen the whole uh, uh, con concepts. So please wait. It's a lot of stuff, right? You are only seeing one screen, Kumar. And as always, I prefer starting from basics, because this is one major challenge that I've seen people don't realize. They learn stuff, they pick up stuff from Google, YouTube, there are so many places these days, right? But they don't understand it. The, the intricacies, the main things are in basics only. If your basics are strong, your advanced level concept will automatically become strong. And I guarantee it, if your basics are not strong, you can write in your resume everything. I, I also do interviews for my company, so I've seen so many people faking them but the moment you ask some question which is relating to basics in the advanced form they don't understand because basics is something which they don't know so this course is from zero to hero which basically means we're going to start from basics then we'll move to core concepts then we'll move to advanced concepts and then finally the big project which i'll be demoing to you in a minute not in a minute maybe in 20 minutes so that's how the progression is going to happen so after this, you should feel confident in Python and you should be able to take on 
Python in any aspect. That is another misconception what people have that Python is only for DevOps guys or Python is only for development. The beauty of Python is it is for everybody. So that is the next question that I want to answer first. Is it for me? You ask me this. So it's for DevOps guys, scripting guys, <clears throat> non-dev, QA. I even taught to non-IT people and they are doing very well now. There's one person in the previous batches, his name is Satya. There's another person, his name is Dana. So <clears throat> it's not about that you have to have software background or anything. You're going to learn from very basics. The only thing that is needed is an internet connection and a computer for you to practice and a zeal to learn. That is the main thing. And you, you could be a web developer, so it could be used in web development, QA, uh, test automation framework, and what else? I mean, you name it and it's all big yes. So if you are in any of these, this is for you, right? <clears throat> and if you already think that you know object-oriented programming and advanced concepts very well, then maybe this is not for you. Maybe it is for more for people who want to understand how in general Python is. And then you take it up to the next level. So next level could be data, uh, data science. Data science is one field, and it's a huge field, I'm sure everybody knows it, where there are so many opportunities, there are hundreds of opportunities. And the field itself is so vast, you cannot um, sum it up in just one word, even though it says data science. It is AI ML is strong, there are so many things. And in AI ML, and most of the data science, big data concepts, Python is very much needed because Python is very, very, um, well, number one, easy to understand, and number two, it's much faster than compared to other languages. So, uh, another question, do I have to have any prior coding background or knowledge? Not needed. As uh, if you can understand what I'm saying, uh, you can understand the whole course. There is no prior knowledge that I expect you to have. If you have, obviously it helps, but sometimes it is uh, detrimental as well because you might get confused but that's my job so that's why i said it is going to be a lot of interactive sessions so that's another advantage with me because you should ask me what what am i going to get there are zillion youtube videos there are zillion udemy videos why should i join this course right but first of all i'm not going to sell it to you but i'm just saying so there are few things that you don't get out of those courses and i think that's where the gaps are and after having identified those gaps and trained so many people successfully, I think that's something that is lacking. Because Udemy, YouTube, anywhere, what they want is they want to finish the whole thing in a very small time. And that is the problem. The thing is, they always miss going deta in details for the basic part. And that's why when you use those in advanced concepts, everybody is stunned that what is this? Because they don't understand it in detail. So that is one uh, aspect that you're going to definitely find with me. Second most important is interactive. I don't want it to be a boring session. I mean, barring today, today is more like a um, demo of things, but uh, every day session will be interactive. And by interactive, I don't mean that I'm the one who's going to come here and talk and talk and talk and you're just looking at it. I want everybody of you to interact with me. So. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, you uh, all I ask is let me just finish my sentence and then I keep ample opportunities as well. I keep asking people any questions, any doubts, and that's when you should unmute and ask. Why I say unmute and not chat? Because that brings me to the second objective or the second benefit. So I've seen this over the years when I interview people as well, that people are scared of talking. They are very good coders because, you know, you just have to write. And by coders, I'm not meaning to say just development. Anybody who's aware in Python, even DevOps guys, everybody, even somebody who writes a script, even in shell script. So <clears throat> those coders are very good coders, but when it comes to talk or explain their code, that is where I've seen problems. And especially the big companies like Fang, I'm sure everybody has heard about it, but if not, and it stands for Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. So one of the toughest interviews to crack, right? So they look at a lot of code optimization. And even before I go there, let me finish my last sentence. So I was saying it, it helps you 
explain your code better to somebody else and that is one thing which is very much important because these people if you don't explain your code very well if you're not able to talk very well in an interview they will think you you already knew the answer from google or somewhere and you're just typing it there so the interaction is very important and next piece is code optimization that's why i said basics to core most people don't even know what core python is they think oh i should know this i should know dictionaries i should know this and i'm done or i should know functions i should know object oriented programming and done but the core concepts and advanced concepts are very very important where you actually learn code optimization that is something that is highly in demand if you want to get a good package if you want to get into good companies so we go through them and they are not even here so i always go extra from this but i'll tell you all those concepts generators decorators everything in detail with good examples on how you even answer those questions in interviews so that is a very very big piece guys and you'll see in a minute from my past batch experiences also people have given that as a good comment for me and i thoroughly believe if you talk in a group of 20 people you should be able to talk then at least with one interviewer so take that hitch out learn how to answer the interview questions that's also an art most people don't follow that so those are very important stuff i see some questions on chat uh yes so navin as you said absolutely you have to learn from scratch and you are not alone my friend there are many people who are from non it background and they want to move to it background and python being so easy is the obvious choice i mean it's much much easier than other languages so yes this will be completely from scratch even if you ask me how to uh, install python and how to spell python i will tell you that but of course at the same time I expect people to put extra effort who have no prior knowledge because you will have to do some uh, assignments thoroughly and even do extra assignments thoroughly so always give the example of this guy satya he is in the, he is in very old batch he was also from non it background and he was one person in all these batches who's always attended all my classes whatever happens is always sending me uh, on whatsapp um okay, this is a code can i optimize it further so that kind of zeal and enthusiasm is needed especially if you're not from it background and then it becomes easy for you make it more fun make it more a learning uh, thing as in like a more day to day job kind of thing start with small small projects so that ways you not only understand python very well you also uh, learn to play with it basically next question is greg, greg is asking how detailed is the django part of the course so of course i'll come there and i'm django is the main demo so maybe um but let me quickly show this since this question was asked this is all in django that is going to be covered everything in detail not just on the fly and the reason i chose django is because i don't actually work in web development which is a django and if somebody is thinking why i'm calling it as django and not django d is silent and um, django is a very very famous framework i'm sure most of you know instagram so instagram was built on django and along with matplotlib so uh, django is or not is is already taken a very fast pace in web development and other things having said that the reason i use django in this is because django is one of the most complicated framework as well it also gives us the capability to interact with da- databases so you not only learn the project in django but you also learn so many extra things that come with it i show you from scratch when we go to the project week that how you are going to approach a problem where you are going to look for documentation because that is very important i mean nobody there are so many frameworks there are thousands of frameworks you can't learn every framework nobody expects you to do that but when you are working tomorrow in your in your job you may be asked to work on some framework that you are not aware of then what will you do right so the point is you need to understand how you navigate through the documentation through everything to understand a new framework and be able to use it for your own work requirements and that is the reason i chose django because it is one of the most complicated framework so my my belief is if you understand the most complicated the lesser complicated frameworks are easy to figure out right so that's the whole reason and of course uh, to answer again greg we go quite in detail in django which you will also see in a uh, in about 10 minutes in the demo <laughs> and duration i think i've already 
answered it is going to be 30 to 35 classes every class is going to be one hour class another important one timings so i'm based out of us but these are based on ist time zone it is going to be 7 30 a.m oh where did it go to almost 8 30 8 45 i mean we generally extend our classes and this is important it's tuesday to friday we do have some extra classes on saturdays sometimes but that's only once we've done at least a good amount of topics then we learn those and there will be a lot of there's some more questions coming in notes i'll just go to look in the notes um and every class is recorded right and shared very very important the recordings are only available for 90 days this is a rule from method technologies even i don't have access so after the course don't expect me to help you with this so it's basically you have to read through them within 90 days so today's class will be available for next 90 days tomorrow's will be again next 90 days something like that and no resume preparation i believe most of you are working people you you can google yourself i can help you but don't expect me to send you or make your resume that is not a part of this course at all <clears throat> all right i have some questions on chat let me see uh, is the django part good enough for apply back engineer rules or we have to learn more concepts to make up uh that truly depends greg uh i'm hoping you'll find me calling you greg i have a friend who's gregory but he likes to be called greg but if not then i apologize so uh yes django in itself is a full backend most people actually call it's not most some people actually call it as full stack as well but i don't like to call it so if you are a good engineer you can yourself learn node.js maybe in a week's time after you're done with Django, and that can give you actually the full stack role as well. But yeah, so backend definitely. But also it depends where you want to apply, the, the target companies that you have, right? So if you are targeting any of these companies, then you have to remember one thing, they ask a lot. And nobody can teach you that because the way you're going to learn it is by practicing. So my point would be, would be if you want to apply for these companies as a backend developer uh, or a web development engineer, or somebody who's working with Django, or even Flask, Flask is a very small micro application compared to Django. Then you have to do a lot more on your own. Just don't use my project. Use, make more projects. Like another person from previous to previous batch, his name is Jana. He used Django. He was completely not from the web development side, just like me. I'm from telecom background. He's also from networking background. He created a networking website and launched it on his EC2 instance. Things like these attract interviewers here if you showcase your work on github especially right all those things so your your work becomes more important than mine my job is to teach you you have to apply it and take it to the next level and the more you practice the more you learn and the more easier you will be to crack these interviews but as we go through i will be teaching everything in detail i will also be telling how the interviewers ask the questions what the interview question language means how you should be answering and especially considering these in mind that's that's number uh, very important point okay next question is are you providing notes so yes every day the source code will be shared with you just like the recording good question actually let me put it here source code of every class is shared right after the class the recording takes some time i think about one or two hours i don't know and i don't have any access to it you have to once the final whatsapp group will be made all of you will get all these details automatically there will be an admin and you can ask him or her and they'll be able to provide you all those i only have access to this because this is what i give you every day so this is right after the class and while i share the code i even put a lot of notes there and of course you have the recording to go back and look to it next question is how we interconnect Python with cloud and DevOps tools. So I will probably show a little bit of a demo, which is something similar, but not exactly the same. But of course, once you're under, so let me also answer that question in a different way. 
it doesn't matter so his question is very good satya is asking that how do we interconnect python with cloud and devops tools he's asking because he's probably from devops background right but like i said you could be from any background the main question really here is what you need to know right which will apply to all of this what you really need to know to interconnect python because python is what you're learning with the thing that you want to work in your domain for example you are into test automation tools or development for example then what do you need for python to connect with the tools development like his question what do you need for python to connect to devops the main thing is there's generally tons of frameworks available just like django there are so many frameworks and of course nobody can teach you every framework and there is no point also you never know what you're going to work but my point is once you understand how to target and how to look at a framework and how to extract the data that you want from that framework so that you are able to solve your problem at your work the main skill that you need there is this oops and most people don't get this but you need all of this to understand oops object oriented programming language because i'll show you probably i did something like this in way back i don't even have my ec2 instance now but i'll show you the sample code and if you look at any code the main thing that you have to do is uh, you have to understand is object oriented programming because most of the times it will start with inheritance and polymorphism most of the times 99.9% of times so understanding oops is very very important once you understand that you can pick up any framework and then like i said i'll show in django how you approach a problem statement how you start from scratch with the documentation so that it helps you build your uh, i'm just going to call it software it could be a tool framework it could be devops also scripting right mostly anything so yes that is what we're going to do uh navin is saying can we get 7 am unfortunately i don't think so that can be done but again we can discuss timings when we do the final batch not today are you going to explain those stuff also i don't know which one are you referring to satya the one that i just said then yes of course uh anusha there could be some problem with you because you're not able to hear my voice apparently you may want to rejoin i think i'm audible because so many people are asking me questions so i'm assuming i'm audible maybe you want to rejoin all right good questions guys good questions keep them coming in chat i'm looking at the chat today so uh yeah raju saying please rejoin so um what was going to say yeah so again the point is there are so many frameworks python is very vast guys so, so one of my students was using it for uh, simple simple stuff because he wanted to get into web scraping i don't know if you guys have heard about it basically web scraping is automatically your uh, program or your script or whatever you want to call will go to a particular website scrape it and get the relevant information that you want i didn't teach it but he needs to understand how he got it because there is a uh, framework for it and for that framework also the first thing that you need is object oriented programming then there was another guy he wanted to get into iot internet of things again something which is very advanced so what he did he and of course i'm always there it's not like i'm just going to be for the project time frame there was somebody yesterday who came to me which who i have trained in mithun 2021 his name is kiran so he's asking if i have something with data science so point is this is a never ending thing you can always come back and ask me ankit i need help with this not expect me to code for you that is not going to happen but at least if you are stuck in something of course i'm going to help you so this guy uh, wanted to get into iot and he learned the whole thing about tts text to speech another framework right it's very simple once you start looking at it the first program that he made was a very simple oh, uh, sorry i should have explained if somebody is not understanding what i'm talking about it's basically in modern day you have your smart devices right like your google home siri all those and you talk to them and they respond back to you so that's what is called as uh, tts text to speech and speech to text the other way so uh, this is in this is a framework that he used and if you look at the first program that he made it was a very simple program that he was losing track of his time so he made a small program where a voice siri like voice would say from his laptop every hour that you know this is the time 9 am 10 pm 11 pm every hour so start with smaller smaller projects and then you would be able to build on it that is a main idea so again saying what i'm trying to stress is as long as you understand 
two things out of this course this thoroughly and again most people directly start with these pillars i first teach everything and there's so much missing here everything in complete detail because i know most people are new to object oriented programming what is a class what is an object what is it what is a constructor where they used how they used then we go to these pillars not like day one i'm going to jump on this at least a week so this and then when you get to the project trying to understand how you approach to a bigger problem and how you start writing your code in object oriented programming that's how it is bala is asking after learning python course how is it in the it industry with a non technical profile will be selected for entry could you please tell us very good question bala so his question is somewhere in this domain if you are from non it background but you've learned python how is the job market so it's a very valid question and i will give you an honest picture since i into interviews also for my company uh if you are from non it background and you just learn python it is going to be tough but what you can do is once you learn python start exploring like i was giving this example right and start making small small projects that will help you in your day to day activity so what do you get out of that one you understand python in even in detail right and second you are able to showcase your ability to code by code i don't mean it's just development i mean scripting anything it's a very generic word and if you put all of this in your github and if you start sharing those in your resume that is how you're going to get calls so if you're from non it background or if you're a fresher same thing goes for that also then you have to do a lot more practice work make your resume look like and i'm saying not look like by meaning to say fake it never fake it that you even though you have no experience but you have coded a lot the more you show this this is the most important piece the more chances of you getting into an interview and the more chance and of course because you have done this by yourself then this automatically comes to you and therefore more chances of cracking the interview but i'll be honest it's not a it's not like a pill or something that i can give you and you swallow and you get a medicine tomorrow you have to work hard that's the main thing especially if you're from non it background or if you're a fresher fresher the benefit is at least you have engineering degree so they don't go in that much of detail and fresh a lot into questions and all those things are done throughout the course in detail so they would they might find it easier compared to non it people but my point is if you have if you have decided to move into it then you have to start somewhere right and what best place to start other than python i think python is the best way to start because whether it's data science anything and i'm sure you guys have heard so many framework names right scipy numpy they're all mathematical frameworks that are there in data science and all these things are used almost every day but what people don't understand is they are always in a hurry to learn this hey i want to learn this framework and i can show it in my resume but how will you clear the interview you that will get you a call but remember you have to clear the interview and you also have to have the ability to code so that you are able to work and maintain that job and grow up the ladder in the job and for that all you need to do is you need to practice a lot all right i hope i have answered that question i went a little bit detail <clears throat> any other questions before i start with the demo i can't say exact month time but yeah mahesh you are almost right because it will be 32 to 35 classes every class is one hour one one and a half hour another question is so i think now people are getting into very very specific questions like what their role is so everybody has a very specific role right and everybody follows different stuff as long as you fall under this like i said which is pretty much everybody you should be able to get advantage out of this course and uh, the another thing is if you don't know python already or if you don't put it in your resume and you're still working which is good then the benefit of that is you can then once you're done with the course and done with practice work and everything all your homework and everything assignments and stuff then you can go to your lead and say hey i am ready can you put me into a python uh, project that way it's even easier because most of the times as far as i've seen the interview is either 
not taken or it's a very minimal kind of a thing and of course once you start getting into an environment where you have to start writing either scripts like the person who asked Naveen who asked the question basically you're talking about writing scripts in devops uh, so if you're thorough with it if you're if you're familiarized with it then there is no stopping there right there's a private question for devops engineer how much more of the python is it increase the profile strength yes i just answered that uh, what's the name that the yeah, so the question is, is it important for DevOps engineer to learn Python? Absolutely. My first one is DevOps only here. It is going to help you tremendously. Uh, I just answered that question, Ali, that uh, it really depends. Could be around one and a half to two months because these, this is what I'm saying, classes 32 to 35. We also often do two hours classes on um, weekends, but that's not right away. And that is more for other stuff. Yes, you can give or take one and a half to two months. It will take. Like I said, I don't rush up into anything. I want everybody to understand things in detail. And it's highly, highly interactive. Let me quickly jump to that feedback. This feedback is not even updated from last so many times because only a few batches I did it. So the pace of the trainer, as you can say, everybody says just about right. And then contents, again, just about right. Interactive appearance. So I only give these three of these four options. These are added by them. As you can see, this is one of my USPs and I thoroughly believe this has helped a lot of people and it will help you because I actually tell how the interviewer is going to ask you the first I explain you the concept and then I'll tell you this is how the interviewer is going to ask you the question and everybody's that oh, I couldn't have even imagined that this is a question that can come from there. So the interaction is very, very important. And I ask everybody to participate. You can take out your hitch of talking as well. And as you can see, most people are, nobody is uh, not very comfortable. As you can see, there's no orange. Everybody was either very comfortable or confident. And overall experience is excellent. So, uh, oh, one more question. Game is private in Ansible. You need to know the Python is what means that So this is a classic, uh, example i should say so somebody has asked it doesn't show me the whole name when you send me a private message i don't know why uh, something with go to meeting uh shaha shaha g maybe yeah i'm just going to enter attendee list and making it out so his question is, is in ansible you can do something right for uh, automation and stuff but what makes you think that you can do it in python or not absolutely so automation again now we're getting into specifics can we do this can we do that any automation you can do first thing that you have to find out is is there a package for it and most likely there is one trust me most people don't know this but there are zillions of frameworks zillions of packages which are already there to support you in your actual um, yeah it's okay uh, maybe they just wanted to send it to me that's fine you can send it to everyone question or you can just send it to me that's fine i'm reading out the question anyways but yeah, uh, Raju is right. Please select everyone and send so that everybody can see the question. So uh, let me, I think now the questions have become repetitive because everybody is going into their own domain and asking, I am doing this, will it help? Let me summarize it in a way that everybody understands it. Like I already said, it is for everybody. Believe me, I Python is so vast and so much used these days. I don't see anybody who's remotely related to it that doesn't need to know python even uh, at some companies you won't believe you might find it uh, difficult to believe but i have a very close friend who works in talent acquisition which is more like recruitment they have asked their recruiters to learn aws and python so imagine recruiters learning python right so python is everywhere and this course is going to give you a solid foundation of python very solid foundation including advanced concepts. What you have to do after this is up to you, whether you want to take it to the next step, maybe data science. So data science is very fast, AI ML, right? So that becomes your step three. Your step one is learn the basics, the core advanced. This is your step one and step two. Then step three, where you want to apply it, whether you want to apply it to AWS, whether you want to apply it to um, AI ML or in any framework, in any place, then that is up to you. Wherever you want to take it, you can take it. Uh, last question I'm going to answer. Bala says data visualization concepts. No. Again, that is a very, very vast topic. 
we are not talking about that that is a topic which needs a good and solid understanding of python and this is more of a uh, like i said zero to hero kind of thing where you need to first understand python and that is more covered in data science concepts not in uh, python courses all right i think if you still have questions i'm not saying i'm not going to stop answering but i'm not going to look for a while you can still answer those you can still put those questions i will take a look at it and uh, i will answer as and when i get to it so since some of you asked devops right and most of you are from scripting or devops background uh, i was just doing this before the so i'll give you so I, before coming to our final uh, demo which is for the django project i'll give you some more demos a small small one demos i should say so i just uh, not just now but sometime back uh, at our work also we were trying to find out a utility which can do something like a wireshark if you're not aware of what is wireshark don't worry it's basically a tool to monitor packages that are going in and out of your uh, framework oh, sorry network it's a networking thing so uh, first thing was how do we do it in python right because we were, we were building a framework so there was a, um, a framework that came up which was called scappy so now i'm just going to give you a brief demo because this is more for devops guys something to understand so what we did it took me only about uh, two or three days and i'm not saying that it would take a lot more time for you once you have a good solid understanding it won't take a lot of time for you you just have to know which exact documentation to look what exactly to follow so i'll just give you a small demo for it and then we'll go to the main demo so it needs sudo because sudo is for admin access and because whenever you're um, sniffing any package or anything you need to be sudo so the way you run it is i just installed it oh it's not here actually i think somebody is uh, dropping and joining back so it takes away my cursor if anybody uh drops and comes back let me get back see All right, there it is. So what this is going to do is this is going to bring my scappy shell. So this is your scappy shell. If you look at the, so this is a beauty guys. Every documentation is a part of these frameworks. You can directly go here and click on this and you can uh, see that but i'll give you a very simple bit, simple thing to follow so let's say you want to check your basic connectivity of your network right what is that how do you do it you use icmp pings right everybody knows you ping something and you get a response for it so the way you have to do it is this so my first question would be and i know some people have some background when they come to these demos maybe they can answer what do you think is happening behind the scenes anybody has any idea you can either text or unmute an answer okay so simple i just ran a very very simple ping using python but nobody understood right anybody who got the idea what is this or if anybody can tell me what is this just this part Yeah. So IP this is nothing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. IP of ICMP protocol from okay. the Google, and that okay. will be the destination. Yes, but in terms of Python, what in terms, yes, in terms of Python? Python. Uh -huh. Okay. So in terms of Python, this is an object that you are trying to create for IP class. My point is even. A basic test. This is a very, very basic test. If you have remote uh, networking understanding, right? This is a very basic test to check ICMP, even DevOps guys. So even for that, what you need to know is, like I said, inheritance or polymorphism. Those two concepts go very, very long way. This is essentially a object of the class IP. And that's how I'm going to use it. Of course, I'm not going to explain the code right now because no, nobody knows uh, in or most of you would not know in so much of detail. I'm just giving you an idea that once you start on an absolutely brand new package, just by looking at this documentation, how you navigate through it. So all you need to know is object-oriented programming, and then you can understand from it. 
So as now you can understand, I'm using this IP uh, in a list and I'm using the destination to get the destination IP and this is my source IP. So this is me, my laptop, and this is Google's IP who was returned using the ICMP. It goes and looks into the packet and it can do all of that stuff. So it's not at all, uh, it's basically very intuitive and it's very simple to follow. Let me give you one more example here and then we'll go to the main demo. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask any time. All right, so this is the, again the Scappy shell. Uh, like I said, let's see if it shows something here. Yeah, so like I was giving you the idea earlier, it is basically an instance of the class IP. Again, object oriented programming concept. So now let's see ta a target IP. We can say about using target on there. Again, somebody dropped. I apologize, guys. Whenever somebody drops go to meeting, fix my. Uh, I don't know why this happens. It's a go to meeting bug. And then it slows me a bit. All right, now IP range is equal to destination equal to trgt or target basically so what i'm doing again i'm instantiating the ip address oh, sorry the ip class that's what i'm going to do i'm explaining in python world not in the networking world and now what you're going to get is with this slash subnet maybe we'll get four ip addresses right let me print it there you go that's my destination network now can anybody who has any idea of this code that i'm going to write Tell me what is this code doing for IP and IP range. Of course, looking at the output, you can tell me that we got the four destination possible destinations for target. The target is a big store in US, right? You can use anything, Walmart, Amazon, anything. But my point is, anybody knows what is this? Anybody? The concept name in Python. Excellent. This is a for loop iteration. Okay, for loop iteration. You're pretty close. But uh, Greg has already answered it. Okay. Yeah, you can go on mute. Thank you. So Greg on the chat answered it correctly. He's the first person at least in all these demos that I've been doing who's answered it. So this is called list comprehension. So these are the things which are very, very important when you go for these because this is actually an optimization of your code optimization of your regular for loops and lists but this is called list comprehension another why is it an interview's favorite because it is very unique to python and it's very very optimized so when i start teaching um, generators i first talk about list comprehension for at least one day so my point is again you have to understand to understand these core concepts these are core concepts that you have to understand the basic concept first. And once you understand such a simple line of code can give you all that you want, right? Anyways, let's get out of this since this is not what I'm trying to demo. Uh, and uh, there was one more thing I was just, so I don't know if anybody has any interest in trading uh, stocks and all, and I'm not a financial advisor or anybody, I'm just using this as a demo. So I created a small board, I actually created a bigger board, but this is a very smaller version. This is my first original board that I ever created myself looking at it. But what I'm trying to show it is, is if you look at it, it always starts with a class, which is nothing but object oriented programming con uh, code. If I just run this, uh, it is going to buy three shares of Tesla for me. If you want to see how it looks like, let me show it to you. Here it is. Let me refresh my orders. Of course, this is a paper trading account and this is no way any um, financial advice just now. I'm in US time zone, so August 3, 1050, as you can see. Let me change it to AMZN, that's for Amazon. Again, this is just for demo purposes, guys. And I bought three shares. Go back here, there you go. Amazon, three shares. So again, the point we, and this is a paper trading account, by the way, not real money. The point being, as you saw, every basic thing. So here also I had a API from this Alpaca itself. And the first thing itself is, look, I had to create a class and I had to use so many methods inside the class, which is all object oriented code. So going back to what I was saying earlier, you need to understand object oriented code in great detail. 
and in order to do that you have to understand the basics first all right any questions so far guys i'm gonna take a little sip of water all right let's go ahead so this is our actual demo or actual project that we are going to build at the end of the course and we'll start with right from scratch creating the uh, folders as well and at every step i'm going to show you how to get um how to look at documentation what to look at it and what i've done is so this is basically django piece of code django comes with a database called tbsql light 3 and that is very simple uh somebody is asking me what's that scappy and also it's okay even if you didn't follow that science scappy is just a framework uh if i show you here scappy python google is your best friend guys go here if you look at it it will tell you basically it's a powerful tool which is used for um this is a github link sniffing basically packets that go in and out of your network and it's just if you know what wireshark is it's basically giving you that capability in your python <laughs> but if you don't know forget it it's not important so uh, like i was saying when we started i'll show you how to even go through the documentation to get every bit of it in detail but for now i'm just gonna give you a brief demo and this is from the previous batch itself and i think i still have to do some beautifications but i haven't done it uh where am i yes somebody has a question go ahead feel free to ask no okay all right there it is so what i'm doing is right now i'm firing up the mini version of the website that i've created it is not an amazon website so please don't compare it with amazon amazon is huge it's a very big company the website itself took years and years but this is something on the similar background where you connect your database so that you're able to add products to it and then display it for your customers basically what i have done is the main piece is products which is where uh, the major python coding is of course you're not going to understand this code as you can see it's also always starts from class so object oriented programming is very important uh, i think i've stressed that enough and some part of html coding here but all it is going to do is let me show it to you so right now it's running on my laptop that is 127.0.0.1 is your loopback ip but if you want to host this website on your ec2 instance you just have to change that ip to ec2 instance so this is just the basic HTML page that I've created with all these. Then let's go to the admin. Why I want to show it to you the admin? Because I want to show you in real time that you can actually add it in database as well as show it to the end customer. So this is a uh, Postgres SQL. Yeah, I was saying that. So it comes by default with DB SQL Lite 3. And I'm not saying that you need to understand SQL and all. That is the beauty of Django. It takes away, I don't understand SQL to be very honest but I understand Python. So I have written my Python code and what Django has done is picked up this Python code and converted it into corresponding SQL code for me. And that is the beauty of Python guys. If you know Python, you can technically use it for anything. Uh, I'll come back to that question Naveen in the chat. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you want to see, this is the corresponding code that, so this is not a code that was written by me. This is Django created it. And this is basically nothing but the corresponding SQL query code. I don't need to learn SQL for this. Nobody needs to learn it, is what I'm saying. All you need to know is Python. So uh, where did it go? I was showing you the database. So yeah, it basically comes with uh, DBSQLite 3, but I have changed it to work with PostgreSQL. Again, it's the same reason. It's one of the most sort of uh, sort out database. Let me show you where it is. It should be here, Django. So I'm changing it to PostgreSQL instead of the uh, DBSQLite 3. So in real time, your products will go here in, Py, in your uh, database. So what is this that I'm opening right now? It's a utility, it's a GUI utility for PostgreSQL as you can see. And it has my uh, 
uh, database already created and everything all set up let's go and look at so these are the product categories that are already there that i have done and let me show you the products there are already some products existing as you can see here and i'm going to add a few products now and show it to you so where did the website got it got lost it did open somewhere let me get it there it is okay so this is how the, the main website was this. I I will tell you each and everything starting from scratch, how to get this, how to get what. But let's just see the demo first. So I'm going to add a product category also. These are the already existing ones that I showed you in the um, database. Let me first show you on the product page as well. So these are already added stuff. Just like Amazon has view details, you can go here and click view more and you can see different more and more details about that particular oh, oh i didn't have to do that back there is full navigation bar here you can go from here to here so now let's add one end to end and see everything how it looks like so for category i'm going to call them as super bikes which i love so if you guys have seen this field is getting automatically populated so one person in one of the uh, earlier projects was looking to get some details on how to use Django with um, blogging, right? So for blogging and other general stuff, this is very much needed. These are called slugs. So let me show you one quick example. What are slugs? So if you ever see any uh, news website, right? They generally have this. I don't know why it is not opening up. Uh, but this is your heading basically. And if you look at it, the spaces are converted to these dashes these are called slugs this is a google optimized uh, search engine optimization concept which basically brings your uh, website much faster and much up so same thing we are doing for everything that we are going to add so if i keep adding here uh, see it is automatically filling that with the dashes so of course i'll tell you how to do it from scratch but this is just for the demo just some number save it it got saved here let's quickly go and check in the database so we added in the category, I'm going to say all tools. There you go, fifth number, it just got added. Let's go back and add a product now, corresponding to that. So if you guys are thinking how all this is done, like I said, we're going to start from scratch. You will not see this right away, right? You will see basically nothing, but we'll see how we can add in stuff to the uh website and then later what i ask you guys to do just like we have done for product you do it yourself for orders here excuse me so that you guys also get a good experience on how to work with it and it's exactly the same thing just the name change uh let's put this and put this so again here also in product i've done the same thing and it automatically populates it if you're thinking because i used a pre-filled version let me show it to you There you go. And I don't know, I'm just gonna go with this. But this is not mandatory, that's why it's gray. This is black means mandatory. All this is auto-populated. I'll show you how to do that again in Python. Very simple. I'll tell what publishes all is later. This is not important for today. And so here is another thing. This description is from Django but this description is not from Django. So I also teach how to integrate it with other frameworks. This is to 3K editor, which is a third party framework. So as we go along the project first, we'll just bring this up, right? But then this is not as good. You look here, there's so much of extra stuff available, but not that is available with Django. So not everything in Django is perfect, right? You may want to use CK editor or some other rich text editor, basically. All you have to do is just Google rich text editor and Python and you'll get CK editor is one of the choices and we use CK editor in the past batch. So the beauty of this is if you go and just copy paste stuff from uh, some website which has pictures and everything, inbuilt content, all that content is going to show up here. That is a beauty, especially from Wikipedia if you have pictures also. I'm just going to blindly copy this. But this is not possible in the Django framework uh, description automatically. So you need to understand how you're going to integrate with third party tools as well, right? So I'm just gonna use this for now, then save. All right, it got saved. 
Now quickly let's go and check in the database. So we added a product. All rows. And there you go. We just added this. Let's go ahead and check on our front end if it is working. You go to view site, you go to products. I have I have it enabled and in ascending order, meaning the first one which was created first and then the last one would be this. So I just added this. And same thing, you see like this, this is the price that we added there. This is the serial number. This is the category and all. So here, if you look at the category, there is no dashes because you should not be printing those dashes here. But look at this, when I click view more, you'll see something here. So you see, this got automatically populated with plugs, the dashes. That is what this SEO optimization is needed. Uh, this feature is needed. And then here you can see, the whole details from Wikipedia is there. It automatically populates this also. So the beauty of this is if it has any links, let's say this, you can click on it and you can directly go there. All of this you cannot do in the inbuilt uh, description. And then I have a thing here, go back to product page so that you don't have to click the back button. All right, that's your home. So you can do a lot of things. Uh, let's say if you were in admin, you wanted to change, uh, and this is obviously how you connect it, which also I will show you in a lot of detail. This is just a demo, guys. This is not a detailed thing to worry about. Uh, the beauty of Django is it's very, very easy. So if you just want to change it to, um, I think Spanish is SP. Yeah. Uh, looks like it worked. Oh, no, it didn't work. Maybe I don't remember the word for, uh, you can easily find this on here actually. Let me run it again. Now refresh it, see, you got it in German. The whole website in minutes is converted to German and instead of English. The, the, the beauty of Django is, and that's why it's such a complicated uh, framework. It does a lot of stuff for you. In fact, it works on a principle called DRY drive principle don't repeat yourself and this is a concept which is very prevalent in the whole python community these days every new package every new framework that comes they want to follow this principle what it simply means is that hey you take care of the actual work leave the petty or admin kind of work for us so this is such a simple trivial thing right but you think just by changing this it will work no there's a lot of code that has got in, but they have already given it to us. We don't have to worry. We just have to change it here. And uh, I think it's, no, not LA. I think it was Spanish, was SP? Oh, it's Spaniel. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Now it is going to go to Spanish. See? So all that information is directly available here. So I obviously teach you how to go through, how to traverse through the documentation, because that is also very important. Like some of you have asked those questions, right? What if I'm doing this, then there will be another framework, there'll be Flask, there will be Ansible, there will be so many frameworks. All you have to do is you have to understand how to approach to a problem, and that will give you the whole bigger picture. All right, I think I've spoken enough. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions, and we're already five minutes above, but I'm happy to stay as long as you have questions. And you can unmute or you can put it in chat. Oh, there was a question in chat, right? Naveen is asking, sir, can we write a code to detect AI content? Of course. What do you think AI is uh, basically used on? Actually, your question is a little, I don't know if I got it right or not, but I think what you really wanted to ask was, can you write a code similar to AI so that it can go and detect internet content? So I don't know if you joined earlier, but uh, I was initially saying you can use this for web scraping as well. Many people do web scraping uh, in Python. It's very, very fast. It's very easy. You just have to go through the documentation maybe for like three or four days and you can yourself start web scraping. It's very simple. So just like AI, so AI is artificial intelligence and machine learning language. What they do is they go and scrape the code, scrape the stuff from uh, internet. And then based on so many algorithms and uh, analysis, they present results based over the time. So uh, of course, yes, but that is not a part of the curriculum if you're asking that, uh, Naveen, because that is going to be in data science course, which is a very advanced course, which it is a longer course, of course. Good questions, guys. Keep them coming.
Anybody else? You can also unmute and ask. Okay, thank you, Shaji. He's uh, sent it to me privately that he liked my explanation, so I'm happy. Thank you. So, like I said, guys, uh, the main advantage is you have to be interactive when we start the course. And the course, I think, starts on Tuesday. But, anyways, whoever has been in touch with you, they will let you know all the details. There will be a WhatsApp group of uh, final people who will pay and join. And then every day, source code will be shared. And every day's recording will be shared there. And you can ask questions there. You can ask me directly questions. I know some people say, oh, don't ask me directly. Nothing like that. Uh, I have a very busy work schedule, but I'll make sure I'll answer them as much as possible. I've always answered everybody's questions. And like I said, this is not just for the duration of the course. Even if you want, we can do it later. So it's confusing. with the Yes, exactly right, Naveen. So my whole perspective of the demo was not to confuse you, but to give you an overall picture what all you can do with Python and Django. So you just saw, let me actually we'll see if this is still open. One second. And it's time, right? I don't have a lot of time. That's why I had to rush it up a little. And I, I apologize for that. Let me just answer that question. So English US, let me put it back. All right. So what I was trying to showcase was this is standing project that you can create a website which is very like a minuscule version of Amazon, very, very tiny version of Amazon, right? Like you have in Amazon, what is the main thing? Products. So let's go to Amazon. Obviously, it doesn't look like that and all because you have to do a lot more beautification. But uh, let's say you search for a product. You get all these pages, right? See? So photograph and a mini version. That's what I'm trying to showcase here. So this is from the admin's view, not as the end user. This is a product name and a picture. And then if you click view more, if you click on this, it gives you the great detailed description, right? All of this. So once you do that on here, you get the detailed description along with the picture, obviously. The whole description from it. And then you can use the snapper or you can use this, all of these things, just like you have an uh, Amazon website. Of course, you can't compare it with Amazon. Amazon is a huge website, right? And they took years to do it. But I'm just telling you, it's a it's a snapshot of it. So that's what I was saying, returns and orders, for example, right? They have it together, but what you can do is you can have a, a separate module here. Let me see if I can draw. Yeah. Like Just like product, have a separate module called orders. And then same thing, this add and change will automatically come. Then have a similar module for vendors. So I leave this for you guys to do it because it's exactly the same like we did in product. All you have to do is you have to understand how you get this, how you get this, how you set up the authentication authorization. That is the main aspect. Once you do that, then of course, whether you want to add orders, vendors, or whatever Amazon website shows you, right? You can, wait a second, it doesn't let me click. You can do a lot of stuff, see, for example, you have all of these tabs. If you click on any of them, they will change you to a different page. So that's exactly what you can do. So for now, we are just demoing the product part. Look at that. And in product, I demonstrated this uh, um, slugs. These are very important for SEO. All right, I have some more questions. Let me take a look at it. Uh, they are coming privately to me. Let me see. Uh, only classes. I did not get your question, Satya. He's asking, sir, you can provide only classes. I'm not sure, Satya. Please elaborate on your question. That's okay, Anusha. If you're not able to unmute, what is the question? I missed initial demo. What do you do during this type of only people will get to work for the without session if I'm struck? Of course. So every class. So she's asking a couple of questions. One question is, will there be doubt session if I'm stuck? So of course, every day when I start, I first ask if you have any doubts from the previous class. You should ask them right away. That's why I said interaction is very, very important. If you're not interacting with me, I would not know whether you're learning or not, right? And there will be a lot of assignments. You have to uh, finish those assignments. Let me just quickly show it to you from the previous batch, which was in me. Let me show there. See, there's so many assignments that I'm going to give you. So you have to be proactive. 
if you are not proactive then don't uh, expect me to be going behind you right but yes if you are proactive you'll be doing all assignments you'll be asking all your doubts every day during the course during the class even out, outside if you're shy you can ping me separately or you can do it on the whatsapp so that anybody else can help you it's a sort of a team effort right and shaji is asking i don't understand why what exactly you want to do can you guys please of course so shaji you have a very good question so his question is how or let me rephrase his question and shaji you tell me if i'm getting it right or not uh and guys these are these are these should not be private send it to everybody his question really is that how do we approach a project how do we understand the initial requirements of a project right so today what i just demoed to you it's a it's a finished product but when we start we have nothing so all of this code won't be here that you're seeing here right so first thing we'll dissect the problem statement what is the problem statement the problem statement for this example is we're going to create a mini version of a website for supply management or for uh, order management for products uh, just like amazon but in a very small version okay so that is a broader customer requirement then we boil down to smaller smaller uh, uh, problems and accordingly we keep coding so if you look at this of course you're not going to understand the code unless you already know python so all of this we're going to do step by step so one day one problem statement at a time this is also not done in one full time you see first i did this then i did this next day so it is an iterative process and that's how you learn tomorrow when you're going to work in your project in your company how you're going to approach to that problem statement so understanding the problem statement is very important even my uh, regular classes also whenever i tell about an interview question or anything i first say what is the problem statement i even write it sometimes on top of my file so of course we will be understanding the requirements very very clearly once we get there i think i answered all the questions maybe i can take one more last question if somebody has and for some people who joined late uh, these are the usual questions i'm going to highlight them again you can take a look at these any other question guys last question please so uh, anusha that is exactly what i was demoing right the there are three demos that i showed you but the actual project that we're going to work on will be the Django project, this one, this complete thing, and you can use this in your GitHub or anything. But of course, I ask you to just update a few things; otherwise, it looks suspicious, right? Don't use uh, the same print statements. Change those words. But of course, practice is also on your end. All right, guys. I think uh, we have 15 minutes past. Uh, one more question. um so greg has asked me a question in the private message um greg i don't mind so his question is can i get your whatsapp number he wants to ask some questions but uh, since we are connected to mithun i would ask you to put post your questions to mithun and they can ask me and fortunately i'm not allowed to share before uh, we get on the final whatsapp group i understand you may have some more queries feel free to post them to mithun technologies raju from mithun technologies or anybody and they will forward it to me and then i can answer those questions and they will forward it back to you awesome you got it all right guys uh, thank you so much for spending the hour and 15 minutes with me i hope you liked what you saw and uh, whether you join or not but uh, all the best for everything and hoping to see most of you in the class and classes start from tuesday india time all right bye for now Connect. Good day.